Folks, what's going on? We are gonna go over some common misconceptions with tractors. We've done videos like this in the past and a little bit of this will be a refresher, I suppose, along with some new topics. Thousands and thousands and thousands of new viewers all the time are checking out our channel. And so it's just a new audience, all these new folks, especially the last year or two, just an influx of folks that have tractors now as well and, and just giving them an education. And so this is the kind of thing, if you've had a tractor, you've been around tractors your whole life, I know a lot of you have as well, then give us your input. You know, a lot of folks read these comments down there too. So if you have something to add, another misconception uh, that's helpful to somebody else so that they don't make an expensive or a, I don't know, a dangerous mistake down the road, this is the kind of information that helps build the tractor community. Okay, so I, I made a little list here, but uh, first one up, you know, is, is all to do with, you know, you're gonna lift too much for your loader. Something along those lines, or the same thing can be said for, well, you're gonna, you're gonna lift too much for your three-point hitch and you're gonna break it. And that's, I, I really don't know where that's coming from. So um, your loader or your three-point are only gonna lift however much they can lift. And there's, there's safeties in place for your hydraulic system that maximize that. And if it's too much for the loader or the three-point to lift it up, then nothing's going to happen. It's just not gonna lift it off the ground. You're not gonna be able to, to raise something that's somehow too heavy for it and then you know have the the integrity of your loader or the back of your tractor fall apart because there's too much weight for it that's that's not possible well unless you modify your tractor in a way to increase the hydraulic system somehow you know if you tweak that go beyond the limits of what it was designed for engineered for in the factory well then you're getting into a different realm when you can potentially i'm not trying to scare anybody but potentially you could exceed what it was engineered to do. Anyway, I think that most recently came up. Um, I posted a video about our VersaForks that we have that go from the, the loader to the three-point hitch and somebody in one of the comments there said something about being careful with, with doing that. And in reality, that's just, not, that's just not gonna happen. I mean, many times I have wanted to see, I've been curious, can I lift something up with, with a small tractor and I haven't been able to. So it kind of validates it for itself. You're not gonna damage your tractor if it's something too heavy. It's simply not gonna lift it up. On the flip side, you can definitely hurt yourself if you're lifting up something really heavy on the front end loader or the three-point hitch and you're not properly ballasted on the opposite side. This in particular goes for the front end loader more so than the three-point hitch. The fulcrum when you're lifting with your front end loader is gonna be the front axle. And so you've got, you do have this weight that's back here but it's, it's not enough weight naturally. You need to add a lot more ballast weight. We talk about the versa bracket, the hitch hangers, the suitcase weights, the ballast box, wheel weights, rim guard, all that stuff to keep this end of the tractor on the ground when you're lifting up something heavy up there. You can see the geometry is different if you're lifting up something heavy on the three-point hitch. It's really closer to the fulcrum then, which is the rear axle at that point, and you have a lot more weight way out in front, especially if you have a, you have a, a bucket or a pusher or something heavy up front there too. So it's a little bit different geometry. You naturally need to have more ballast weight on the back if you're lifting with the front than vice versa. Planning for the future, all right? This is a really good one, and it's, it's a fairly common question that I'm asked is, you know, hey, I have a 1025R now, which is like the tractor I'm sitting on, but in a couple of years, we're gonna be moving or we're gonna develop the rest of our property and I'm gonna need something big like a 4066R. So what can I buy now that'll work on, on this tractor and on the 4066? You know, a snow pusher, pallet forks, um, a snow blower, whatever the heck it is. And the answer is not much. You can get a quick hitch like the, uh, the Spico E-Hitch, that'll work on both. And we use it on, on our, our big and small tractors in the compact world, but that's about it. You know, a 54 inch snow pusher that I'm looking at up here is not even gonna cover the tracks, let alone be undersized. It's not gonna have enough support and, and bracing in it uh, for the extra weight of the tractor on a 4066, but it's not gonna be wide enough either. It's, it's only four and a half foot wide. A 4066 is six foot wide, all right? And same thing with a snow blower. 54 inch wide back there, again, you're not covering your tracks, pain in the butt. Same thing with a brush hog, a four foot one on a 1025R and a six foot minimum on a 4066. So, the list goes on and on and on, but there's certain things, maybe if you're upsizing just one frame size down the road where you can get away with it, but if you're gonna go from one end of the spectrum to the other end, the chances of being able to, to carry those attachments along with you are gonna be slim to none. All right, folks, definitely talked about this one before. Um, I'm gonna say this in a way that hopefully sticks. Horsepower doesn't matter. And not that it doesn't matter at all, because I, I, I get that. But folks get very tied up on, I need a, a 30 horsepower tractor, I need a 40 horsepower tractor, I need a 50 horsepower tractor. And there are so many other variables that go into buying the right tractor to fit your needs. Horsepower is 
just one. I mean, and there's, there's going to be certain attachments that do require certain amounts of horsepower. And if you have, I don't know, some really random task where there's only one size of this attachment available and it demands 50 PTO horsepower, well, then I guess that's going to be the requirement you need. But more often than not, you're going to be able to have an attachment that's sized appropriately to your tractor size. And that could be a four foot attachment working on your 1025R that, you know, has 18 PTO horsepower at the rear. You know, that's why you run a, one of the reasons why you run a four foot rotary cutter on there. And one of the reasons you run a six foot rotary cutter on a 4066. Part of it has to do with acreage. Part of it has to do with the size of the jobs. And, and we did a video tackling this subject a while back too and, and calculating the amount of time it would take to, to till a field or to brush hog a field. But you can go through that and, and really dissect the difference between a four foot tool, a five foot, a six foot, a seven foot tool to tackle the same job. And, and if you have not just one acre, but maybe 20 acres of that type of work to do, well, that's when getting into a bigger tractor makes more sense. Budget comes into play, storage comes into play, a lot of factors come into play. And, and so I think I continue to, to talk about it. You need to most of the time lower horsepower down the priority list there and let the whole picture kind of leads you to the right tractor setup for you. Okay, next up, we're gonna talk about hydraulics. All hydraulics are not created the same. If you're buying a tractor out of the factory, if you just get it in the standard stock setup, almost all tractors out there are not gonna have what you need on it to run a grapple or any other fancy hydraulic operated attachments. Well, Summit does for sure include that as standard, a remote up front and a remote on the back. They're kind of a different animal though, but in general, not only are you not gonna have those hydraulics standard, but there's gonna be different types of hydraulics. You're gonna have a power beyond hydraulic, which is something that is going to have an open circuit. So a backhoe is a really good example of that. A backhoe has its own joysticks where you move the booms around in the bucket and dig and, and extend everything out. So that attachment has the controls on it, the circuitry. And so that means you don't have any circuitry on your actual tractor itself to control those valves. Now think about running a grapple you're gonna have a button on your handle typically that's going to be the control circuit and there's gonna be no levers on your grapple at all. So the, the attachment like a grapple is not gonna have any controls in itself. It's just gonna have hoses in a cylinder you plug into. The control, the circuit is gonna be on your tractor. On top of that, there's no standard as far as what type of fitting or what size of fitting, or even if it's male or female. There's folks out there that will try to tell you there is a standard and I've been, I have been told myself very bluntly by customers that there's a standard. There's only one way things are set up, but I've sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe, I don't know, maybe 1500 used tractors. I've seen all sorts of setups and they are not standard by any stretch of the imagination. So if you don't have the hydraulics you need, go to summit-hydraulics.com. You're going to get a DIY solution. You can do it yourself in just an hour or two, install at home, get your third function up front, get rear remotes, get a rear remote multiplier so you can have four, five, six hydraulic circuits back there if you want to, super cool stuff, but don't be fooled into thinking there's some sort of a standard setup because it could be quarter inch, three eighths, half inch, flat face couplers, Pioneer, male, female, there's not gonna be a standard by any stretch. That's why most of the equipment we sell doesn't come with the hoses and fittings on it because you don't know what your setup's gonna require, what length of hoses, what fittings are on there, and yet you really can't accurately know that until you have the equipment all right in front of you. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. So this one here is um, unfortunate if you already have your tractor, but for those of you that don't have a tractor yet or are gonna buy your next one, it's something to give a lot more thought to than I think a lot of folks do. And that's gonna be the tires that you get along with it. And that's a, a very common question that I'm asked and through email, through YouTube comments and, and everywhere else is uh, what options are available for me? I really don't like the tires that I have. Now the most common tire that people don't like is gonna be the R4 Industrial, which also happens to be the most popular. So there could be a correlation there. If you had the most of something, then that's, it makes sense. It's logical to have the most amount of folks also not like that too. 
So a large amount of folks probably do like them just fine. I, I don't like them at all. And I have our four tires on here and I've actually grooved these tires to get better traction in the winter time um, on snow and ice, that kind of thing. And it's really made a big difference. So there's cheap ways to get away with that. But if you haven't bought your tractor yet, I got a buddy just down the road. We're actually uh, hoping to do a video here when he gets delivery of his new um, Kubota L6060, the anniversary edition. And I encouraged him check out, see what the options are on there because a lot of tires, not only are the tires very expensive to replace, I should say, but there's certain tread patterns that if you want to go from like a, a turf tire to an R4 or an R14 or an Ag or whatever it is, you need to get a new wheel as well. So not every wheel is going to be compatible with the tread pattern that you want to get. And that's, I mean, we're talking on a, on a big tractor, like a three or a four series, a big compact, that could be two grand or more if you need to change the wheels and the tires something smaller like a 1025R, every tread pattern that's out there is gonna work on these uh, wheels. You don't need to change them, but still to, to change all the tread on here, I don't know, you're probably somewhere in the six to $800 mark uh, just to do that. Literally just got an email from my buddy who's gonna get that L6060. I had asked him to check on the, the Goodyear R14 tires and the Kubota dealer is saying that they don't offer the Goodyear R14s. To me, that does not seem right. I feel like Messix did a video on the Goodyear R14s. Uh, maybe I'm misremembering something, but this is where this is where it gets really confusing. And it doesn't it doesn't matter if it's Kubota, if it's Deer, whoever it is. But you're going to get a lot of conflicting information from dealers, and and so um, forums are a really good way to double check the information that you're getting. Uh, go to a forum, you know, I've talked about Green Tractor Talk, Orange Tractor Talk, um, Tractor by Net's a great one, all encompassing with every tractor brand out there. But bounce these questions, if you're questioning it, <laughs> bounce these off of the community that's out there that's already gone through the same process. All the other folks that have already gone through buying a brand new tractor, shopping it around at various dealers, getting conflicting answers, but having proof sitting in their driveway showing that what one dealer told you is wrong and what another dealer can do is correct. So anyway, um, moral of the story, tires are a big deal. Make the right decision up front. And in fact, we are going to do a video sometime soon with a representative from Titan Goodyear, Titan being the, um, not the Titan that we talked about before, but Titan Goodyear that does all the tires for most of the OEMs that are out there. Gonna go over all the things, what all the numbers mean, all the the different things that you wouldn't think about with tires. So if you wanna know something about tires and you're not sure what it is, leave a comment down below and let us know and we'll include the answer in that video. Oh, and that's a good reminder to subscribe for future videos so you'll be reminded when that video comes out, but give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you need to. And if you're looking for tractor attachments, check out goodworkstractors.com because we sell and ship all over the country. Okay, this last one is uh, one of those shake my head kind of comments that, that people make is, it must be traded in for a reason, you know? There's gotta be something wrong with it because that's the only, the only way that things, whether it's tractors, trucks, anything else are ever traded in, houses. <laughs> that's the only reason things are, are traded in and people go get new ones is because there's something wrong with the old one, right? That's just not the case. Needs change for folks all the time and that's one of the main reasons that tractors are sold with a lot lower hours than other things. You see high mileage vehicles traded in a lot, but tractors, well, it's really surprising how efficient they are. And a lot of, especially first time tractor owners, you can't, you just can't wrap your head around how quickly you can get jobs done. It is, it's mind boggling that something that you used to do by hand and wheelbarrow and a rake or something else would take days to do and you can get it done in a half a day or less with a tractor. And so hours just don't get added up like you would think. And that's a good thing. I mean, these tractors can go thousands and thousands and thousands of hours. Um, You'll see, I've seen, I almost bought one one time, a 1025R that had like 12 or 13,000 hours on it. It looked terrible. I mean, it was in rough condition all around. It still ran, they had a video of it running. The tires were all bald. It was, it was a sight to behold. And I, I should have bought it just for the sake of doing it, just to kind of to kind of show you guys what these things can do. But most folks are never gonna run a tractor into the ground. There's always some that will, but the majority of folks buying a tractor like this, a compact tractor, they're gonna have it if they want to the rest of their life. Now, again, more often than not, they don't. Their needs change and they get something else. But again, it's like uh, some comments in a video a while back with the, uh, the three-point log splitter that we had on the Kubota that we were running from Splitfire. Really good attachment and some folks are like, well, why are you putting hours 
on your tractor doing this. And it's like, what are you gonna, what are you gonna tractor for? Why don't you get a, a self-powered brush hog back here, get a self-powered snow blower, get a self-powered chipper, get a self-powered log splitter. Why don't you just get engines on all your tools and not put any time on the tractor engine at all if that's how you feel about it. You know, these tractors are made to be used, they're made to be worked, they're simple machines really. And I'm telling you, most folks put like 50, 60 hours a year on their tractor. You get some that put more than that on there, but even if you put 100 hours a year on there, to get to 2,000 hours, that's 20 years. I mean, that's like forever, and that's really not much on a tractor. You know, but I did, uh, so well, we, we've talked about uh, our buddy down the road, Mr. Eric. He bought a, a four series tractor from me, oh, gosh, maybe it was two years ago, three years ago. Had a couple hundred hours when he bought it, but he hit a thousand hours recently on there. He, he sent me a picture, a thousand point four hours on there. So he is one of the exceptions to the rule. I drive by his place a lot and, and more often than not, he's out on his tractor doing something with it. And so that's pretty cool, but thousand hours, Again, it's nothing. He could probably put 10,000 hours on that tractor if he wanted to and keep on ticking. Well, that's gonna wrap it for us today. So again, I'm sure there's a lot of other misconceptions and maybe some that you kind of went through yourself and discovered as well. So leave a comment down below and help some other folks out. And again, we'd love to have you tag along. So hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up. And if you're in the market for an attachment, we'd love to help you out. Check out goodworkstractors.com. We do sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.